In this screencast, I want to talk about greedy algorithms. In particular, I want to explore discovering a correct greedy algorithm for a particular problem and then proving that it is, in fact, correct. So, first of all, what is a greedy algorithm? Well, a greedy algorithm is an algorithm that constructs the solution to an optimization problem piece by piece, basically one, one step at a time, if you will, going through a sequence of choices that each choice is feasible. What does that mean? It means it meets the requirements specified by the problem. It's locally optimal. In other words, it makes the solution larger using some criteria that uh, set that fits with the criteria that you're trying to achieve um, in the optimization problem. And finally, it's irrevocable. This is probably, the, the key, in some sense, the key one. You're not allowed to go back and change any previous partial solutions. You can't go back and revisit things that you've already done. Greedy algorithms have two main uses. Uh, they yield optimal solutions for problems, or in other cases where they don't give an optimal solution, they provide a fast approximation when other approaches are too inefficient. So on this slide, just some examples, uh, change making for s normal coin denominations like U.S. currency, uh, minimum spanky problem, shortest paths, some scheduling problems, which we'll talk about some of the ones that it has that it works for, um, and Huffman codes. Those are optimal codes under certain criteria. Approximations, um, and we'll talk about those in this screencast, but perhaps in future screencasts, casts uh, to the traveling salesperson problem, the knapsack problem, and other combinatorial optimization problems. So the first problem we're going to look at is what's called interval scheduling or job scheduling. And the idea here is given some set of jobs that have start times and finish times. And you can think of these as computer jobs if you want or any other any tasks. And two jobs are compatible if they don't overlap. So in other words, the processor, whatever it is, whether it's a human or a company or a computer, um, it can't do more than one thing at a time. And the goal is to find a maximum subset of mutually compatible jobs. Again, the sort of the key thing to keep in mind here is you're given a start time S uh, J and a finish time F J for each job. So here's a picture. Um, job A goes from time zero to time six. Job B goes from time one to time four. C goes from job three to time five. And then finally, H goes from time 8 to time 11. And what you want is find compatible. In other words, they don't overlap. And you want to find the maximum number. So here's a compatible set. Uh, B, which goes from 1 to 4. Then E, which goes from 4 to 7. And then H, which goes from 8 to 11. Another compatible set is A job A, which goes from 0 to 6, and job G, which goes from 6 to 10. And there are other compatible sets. What we're trying to do is come up with an algorithm which will find us the maximum size compatible set, the one with the most jobs. So in this particular case, in fact, in a number of different cases, including minimum spanning tree, uh, which we'll talk about in a later screencast, there are lots of greedy possibilities. So you could order the job, say, an earliest start time, and then just go through and pick the earliest start, earliest starting job, then look and see what the next compatible job is when in that in the ascending order of start times, and just pick the jobs that way. You could do the same thing for finish time. You could sort the jobs in shortest interval, and then just take off the one that's shortest, and then look to see, go through jobs and get the next one that's compatible with this, etc. And you could also do fewest conflicts. So now I think it would be a, a good exercise to try to develop counterexamples for each candidate approach. You don't want to spend time on greedy 
algorithms that you're not sure whether they work or not. So an easiest first step is to see if there's some simple example that shows that it doesn't work. So what I'd like you to do now is take a few minutes before you go on, before you so pause the screencast and try to draw a picture like the picture back on a couple slides back where you've got time all on the x-axis and you've got the jobs and try to draw a picture with a set of jobs where earliest start time is not does not give you the correct the maximum size set does not give you the correct answer do the same thing for earliest finish time shortest interval and fewest conflicts now some of these may work some may not work so don't spend a lot of time on any one of them but just give it a shot to try to find a counterexample that's an important part of developing greedy a greedy algorithm is to look for counterexamples they both el can eliminate wasting time trying to prove something that's not true and they can also give you some insight into the problem so here's some uh, counterexamples so earliest start time so here we have a job starts early but it runs for a very long time whereas if we would ignored that job then the other, we could have done the other four jobs so clearly in this for this little example earliest start time is not going to give you the largest compatible set uh, similarly in this example uh, shortest interval right this is the shortest of the three but that's not certainly once you've got that you can't add either of the other two intervals to the compatible set but obviously if you just pick this one and this one then you would have a compatible set with two jobs in it and that would be optimal and then the counterexample for break fewest breaks fewest conflicts is the most complex so here you can see if you pick this job which has the fewest conflicts all these jobs well these jobs have uh, conflicts with four other ones this job has conflict with three other ones three other ones and of course it's symmetric on the other side this job only has conflicts with two other ones so this is the job with the fewest conflicts and you can see if you pick this job you can't pick either of these two so you might pick this job and this job and then that's it or if you pick this one you might pick this job and this job and that's still it so picking this you can only get three jobs whereas it's pretty obvious that in fact you can get four jobs so these counter examples uh, don't mean that uh, earliest finish time is correct it just means we've eliminated these three so the question is can we now show that earliest finish time is going to be a correct greedy algorithm for the maximizing the number of compatible intervals so we, before we go on to that, it's always good to let's let's write down exactly what the algorithm might look like. So first we sort the job sort the jobs by finish times. Okay, so now we've got and we renumber them. So now f1 is less than or equal to f2, etc. And then all we have to do is loop through the n jobs, and if job j is compatible with the set that we've already chosen, then we just add it to the set. And in order to check compatibility, you should stop and think about how you have to do that. Well, you just look at the last job that was added. It's got a finish time. And make sure that the next job you're going to try to add, that its start time is bigger than or equal to the finish time of the previous job. So if you think about this, clearly linear in this loop. Um, and then the sorting is in log n. So in fact, um, that's what the performance of the overall algorithm is going to be. So the proof for interval scheduling is going to be what's called a stay-ahead argument. And this is useful in um, proving greedy algorithms are true in many different situations for many different problems. It doesn't always work, but um, generally speaking, it, it it's a good candidate to try to use to prove that a greedy algorithm is true. Um, and it usually follows a, the same pattern. You can either typically do it by uh, induction, mathematical induction, or you can do a proof by contradiction. In this case, I'm going to use a, uh, the principle of mathematical induction to prove it. 
So here's the idea. Um, we're going to take two solutions. We'll let sigma be the set of compatible jobs given by the algorithm. And we're going to assume that there's some sigma star um, that's an optimal solution. If you think about some of the examples we already did, there can be lots of optimal solutions. So both sigma and sigma star be, be ordered, order their jobs by finish times. Okay. Notice this also means that sigma and sigma star are also ordered by their start times. So think about why that is. Okay, the, so what do we want to do? We want to apply the principle of mathematical induction. We need to specify some proposition, uh, pk, where n goes, where k, this should be k, where k goes from 1 to the size of the largest compatible set. Um, and we'll assume that sigma star goes from 1 to n, in that many jobs, with n compatible jobs. And we'll say that sigma goes from 1 to m in terms of the jobs. And it'll turn out, we're going to show that m and n have to be equal. Both sets are going to be sorted by their finish time again. And by induction on p of n, we'll show that the earliest finish time algorithm constructs a solution with n equals m jobs. So here we go. Here's our proposition uh, that f of k, remember that's the kth job in the, the finish time of the kth job in the greedy algorithm set, uh, is less than or equal to f of k star. And we want to show that this is true for all k bigger than or equal to 1 up to n. So, base case. We want to show that p of 1, this proposition is true, that is, that f of 1 is less than or equal to f star of 1. Well, that's trivial, because that's how we define f of 1. It's the earliest finish time of all the jobs. So, clearly, it has to be less than or equal to uh, the finish time of any other job, no matter what this job happens to be. For the inductive case, we want to show that pk is tr if pk is true, then pk plus 1 has to be true. So, standard induction proof. Right? If we can show this is true, then we'll have shown that the uh, proposition is true for all k. All right, so we need to show that if the finish time of the kth job in the greedy solution is less than or equal to the finish top time of the kth job in the optimal solution, then the finish time of the k plus first job in the greedy solution is less than or equal to the k plus first job in the optimal solution. Okay, so that's the key. That's what we're shooting for. All right. So, remember what f of k plus 1, how we get that finish time. It's the job with the earliest finish time chosen from the set of jobs that start later than f of k. Well, let's see. Here's a job. Uh, S star of k plus 1, f of k plus 1, from the optimal solution. But this has to start after S, uh, the kth job in the greedy solution, finishes. Why? Because um, S star, the, optimal, the start time of this k plus first job in the optimal solution, has to be bigger than the finish time of the kth job in the optimal solution because it's a compatible set. So, what does that mean? But what? But also, we know that f of k star has to be bigger than or equal to f of k. That's the inductive hypothesis. So, just by transitivity, we get that the start time of the k plus first job has to be bigger than or equal to f of k. Therefore, s, this job, the k plus first job in the optimal solution, has to be compatible with the kth job in the greedy solution. But wait a minute. How do we pick the k plus first job in the greedy solution? It's the one that finishes first of all the jobs that are compatible with f of k. So in other words, f of k plus 1 has to be less than or equal to f of star of k plus 1. So the finish time of the job in the greedy solution has to be less than or equal to the finish time of the k plus first job in the optimal solution. So, what have we got? Well, we certainly proved the inductive hypothesis. So this implies 
that Sigma has at least as many jobs as Sigma star, since the nth job in Sigma ends before the nth job in Sigma star. So if there were more than n compatible jobs in Sigma star, then they would be compatible with the jobs in Sigma. But then the greedy algorithm would have had, had to add at least one of them. So that contradicts that uh, Sigma contains n jobs.